Hey guys, this is Jonathan with a woodworking project for you, for me, for anyone who really wants to get into doing some woodworking. Well, today I'm going to make a stovetop cover board, also known as a noodle board. So this past Christmas, my wife was on Pinterest just a little too much and asked me to build this little stovetop for her. And of course, being a good husband that I am, I wanted to turn around to make sure we got this done for her. So it's a fairly easy project, which I knocked out in a few days. Also, before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, forward it on to a friend, a family member. Maybe pass it on to that husband who just needs a little bit of an encouragement. So, let's begin. Now, this might be your first woodworking project, or it could be your 50th. My point about bringing this up real quick, not everyone has all the woodworking tools, the shop, the drills, the saws. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to highly recommend this. Go to Lowe's. Lowe's has professionals down there that will actually cut the material to size. And of course, if you go over a certain amount of cuts, there's a nominal fee, but definitely worth it. So don't let this project scare you away when you start talking about cuts. It is an easy project. Just wanted to give you that recommendation. So once you've gathered all your materials, I'm going to suggest that you lay everything out prior to doing anything. This way you can catch any issues or any defects and do a dry fitting up front. So after that, it's time for gluing. And as you can see, wearing my fashionable light powder blue gloves, I put all the boards on one side and applied the glue evenly with my hand. It's called the hand approach. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and assemble, put everything, brace it together. Now, if you don't have clamps like I do here, you can take the two perpendicular boards that are meant for the handles and basically screw those in on the edge. That will actually hold good enough. Uh, to hold everything securely, but again, I would prefer the brace. Not everyone has braces, but trust me, it will still be a perfect project. Now, at this point, we're going to go ahead and start sanding, but make sure everything has dried. And we're going to start sanding using the method of the left, right, wax on, wax off. You're going to make sure you sand with the grain. Uh, from that point, um, you're going to go start with your heavy grits down to your finer grit, giving a finer sand. But please make sure you wear all your safety gear, mask especially. Once your sanding's done, make sure your work area and the board is thoroughly cleaned of all the fine dust and particulates. And then we'll start the process of staining. Now, there's a lot of options when it comes to stain, whether it's an oil-based, water-based. And in my case, I'm using a water-based stain by Minwax. And the color that my wife has chosen is close to the grayish blue, uh, a deep gray undertone with a white washing that's going to go on top. And then we'll put a clear coat. Uh, in any case, please, uh, if you decide to use an oil base. Make sure you're out in a well-vented area. One of the advantages of a water base is that it has less fumes. Now, of course, I'm going to interrupt and say, hey, uh, I have a lot of information and useful tips on my website, which I'll put down inside the description uh, or link in my bio, uh, but be more than happy to uh, take a look at it, visit a lot of free information and the plans for this whole project if you want them as well. Now, if this is your first time applying stain, uh, I'd recommend taking a little test piece, apply the stain so you can get a feel on how it, it goes on, how it looks, how it gets absorbed into the wood. Just a general good idea. Some people do it, some don't. I take the cautious approach because I only want to do a project once. So after we're done with staining, we go to the whitewash. Now, whitewash, I'm using the Ovation, it's a, excuse me, Ovation plus by sherman williams it's a water-based paint it has a slight tint of grade that i added to it and i'm going to mix that with a solution of uh, 50 50 percent of water with paint it's a quick stir and then i'm going to apply that with a brush then wiping it down to the desired look after your whitewash has thoroughly dried it comes to the vinyl application now, I went ahead and did the design. Overall, it's roughly about 14 by 14 inch 
uh, found a vinyl manufacturer and of course had two choices to get it as one piece or as a bunch of different individual vinyl connected pieces which I thought one piece and my wife agreed of course actually she preferred it and told me what to accept and at that point uh, we went ahead and applied it uh, so as you can see the boss took over this was her fun time to be part of the project she applied the vinyl and put everything on there as it was supposed to be done um, at that point that's when i start the clear coat now i'm using a poly acrylic uh, by minwax great applicator i've used this on a couple different projects and the one thing i definitely like about it tends to not yellow like some of the other clear coats that you may put on there um, so as you can see, I'm putting on a couple coats, front, back, sides, and I do that sealing the vinyl underneath, actually giving a bit of extra adhesion for the edges so it won't peel up if I did it at the end. Uh, so this way it's actually under the clear coat. Uh, at that point, it's a matter of putting on the handles. You can call this project done. If you have any feedback, please leave them down in the comment below. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share, and of course, have a wonderful day.